In this session, we are going to deal with the different energy sources. As we all know, sun is the ultimate source of energy, isn't it? But still, for the commercial, industrial and even for our homemade purposes, we use different sources of energy. It can be of different types like renewable, non-renewable, conventional, non-conventional, etc. So, we need to have a brief discussion of different sources of energy that is available to us. As Einstein said, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be only changed from one form to another. Take in the case of generating electricity from hydropower plants. What is the change of energy that is occurring here? That is the hydropower energy, the mechanical or the kinetic motion of water, which is the kinetic energy of water, is being converted into electricity. That is the kinetic energy of water is converted into electrical energy. So, in that sense, what Einstein said is 100% correct, isn't it? That is, energy can't be created or destroyed. It can be only changed from one form to another. This happens in every cases of our life. Only thing is that we may not be aware what is happening around us. So, we need to define what is a good source of energy. As the word suggests, good means something of desired quality. So, a good source of energy should be desired quality. Second important feature of a good source of energy is, it should be able to do a large amount of work per unit volume or mass. For example, if I consider a fuel, then I will be desiring that this much fuel would be able to do this much amount of work. And if I am using it to run a vehicle, I would expect that for this much kilometers, this much liter of petrol or diesel is enough. If the vehicle stops before that expected rate, you would say that is not a good source, isn't it? So a good source of energy should give a desired amount of work per its unit volume or mass. And also an efficient source of energy is the one which is easily accessible. Accessibility is also another important factor which determines the quality of a source of energy. It should be available to all people disregard of their social status or their residing areas. A good source of energy should be also easy to store as well as transport. For example, if it is in case of nuclear energy, we should be able to store it in a very safe as well as in a sufficient manner and transport it in a very safe way that does not destroy the nature or cause any hazardous situation. Also, an energy source can be available or can be acceptable to all people only if it is economical. That is, it should be within the range of our expenses. They should not be having too much money or, or should be within the expenses of the common man. For example, when there is price hikes for petrol or diesel, the people are in strikes. Why? Because it's not economical and such a source of energy cannot be called as good. So, if we take special case of fuel as a source of energy, we have a lot of fuels around us, isn't it? For example, if you take the fossil fuels, we have coal, oil, natural gas, petroleum, etc. So, these fuels also share some common properties as the general good sources of energy. So, here we are discussing what are the specific characters which is needed for a good fuel. As in the previous case, they should be readily available, they should be cheap or affordable to all people, then they should be easy to store and transport. When I consider this particular one of fuels, the one important factor is that they should burn at a very moderate rate. The rate of burning of these fuels must be in a moderate level that is feasible for all applications. They may not be having too much heating capacity or not underrated. They should burn at a moderate considerable rate that is applicable to all general applications like industrial purposes, commercial purposes, running of vehicles, etc. 
and also a good fuel is something that produces a large amount of heat we desire to get heat energy from fuel isn't it by using this heat energy we run different forms of applications like running a vehicle running machines etc and also a good fuel must not leave any undesirable substances for example if i burn wood you will get ash and there is a question how will you safely dispose this ash because when we breathe the ash particles they will lead to many diseases like asthma so just like that a good fuel should not be leaving any undesirable substances it should give only the product that is desired and a good fuel or an efficient fuel must not cause any kinds of pollution whether it be air pollution water pollution or land pollution so by comparing the characteristics of good fuel as well as good energy you are now able to distinguish what is a good source of energy and what is not so good sources of energy so the sources of energy can be generally classified as renewable and non renewable what does the word meaning renewable says renew means to regenerate or replenish non renewable means that cannot be renewed again so renewable sources of energy are those that can be renewed within a short period of time who may be the suppliers of renewable source of energy mostly it is our nature but in case of non renewable sources of energy as in the picture you can see the heat which is coming from the factories or power plants are non renewable this is because they may be running on the basis of fossil fuels they are non renewable why are they non renewable because they can't be produced as we wish within a short period of time so renewable energy sources are those which are having an unlimited supply that is even if we use they will be reproduce again and again so nature is a supplier of renewable energy sources so we should be thankful to our nature for providing us with abundant source of energy isn't it so the different natural resources like wind solar geo water energy biomass energy etc contributed to the renewable energy sources since they are renewable energy sources can't we use it as an alternative to fossil fuels isn't it why should we get the fossil fuels like petroleum and diesel by buying it with so many money from the outsiders why can't we use the renewable energy sources like wind solar etc nature is giving us free isn't it so we should be more careful to use the renewable energy sources instead of fossil fuels like petroleum or natural gas etc so this is a chart which compares the renewable energy sources and non renewable energy sources so we can look into the first feature that distinguish a renewable energy source and non renewable energy source the renewable energy sources never gets depleted what is in the case of non renewable they get depleted with use that means renewable energy sources are never ending one and they are replenished even if we use it what is in case of non renewable once we use it they get depleted or finished the second point is renewable energy sources can be used again and again why because they are renewable or they are reproduced again and again within a short period of time but in case of non renewable energy sources they can be used only once once it is used means they are finished for example if i am running my car by using petrol if i am cover distance of suppose 5 kilometers by using a certain amount of fuel can i regain the fuel again no once the fuel is used to run the car that fuel is finished only then we can install or install another liters of petrol send it but suppose if i am using solar or wind energy even if i have used it to produce electricity again there is solar energy which is being provided by the nature so it is renewable so third point is renewable energy sources are available freely in nature but in case of non renewable energy sources most of them are derived ones or they are extracted by long process of production as well as by long processes of conversion and extraction so some of the examples is that 
solar wind water geothermal and biomass are examples of renewable energy sources the main examples of non renewable energy sources are coal oil natural gas petroleum etc for this fossil fuels to be produced which are non renewable it would take a long time to get produce again why is it so it's because most of them are being made from the fossils which requires a lot of years to be formed so the types of renewable energies are biomass so what is biomass means it is the energy that is obtained from living plants or animals things then solar energy geothermal energy geothermal means the energy that is obtained from the heat of the earth then wind energy and hydropower energy hydropower energy means the energy which is obtained from the flowing water or kinetic energy of water so energy is converted from one form to another which is used in different applications like producing electricity lighting our houses run machines commercial as well as industrial purposes so now we need to deal about conventional sources of energy what do you mean by conventional conventional means they are the traditional sources of energy and that would be familiar to most of the people and may be commonly used so what are the conventional sources of energy that we use in our daily life so the main source of energy that we use for a vast number of purposes and still they are so expensive but we use it so it is conventional and one of the main example is fossil fuels as a word suggests they are the fuels that can be obtained from fossils so what do you mean by fossils fossils means they are the remains of dead plants and animals so do we extract this fossils as we wish no the fact is that this fossils need to decay and after millions of years only we are able to extract them as different fossil fuels like coal oil natural gas petroleum etc so fossil fuels are non renewable so we should use it judiciously and carefully that they are being used only in a moderate amount but what we need to do is we need to replace this fossil fuels with alternatives like renewable source of energy which the nature supplies us isn't it so this chart clearly depicts how the energy consumption rate is being in india you can see that the renewable source of energy only accounts to 14 percentage nuclear energy accounts to only 7 percentage what about the other three the natural gas coal and oil together contributes rest of the majority portion of energy consumption in india so that means fossil fuels like natural gas oil and coal contributes to the human gas amount of energy in india so that means for anything and everything we use fossil fuels as source of energy but we what we need to do is we need to utilize more the renewable energy sources that the nature provides us isn't it so while using fossil fuels we are able to generate energy that's fine but there are also some disadvantages for fossil fuels isn't it of course there are and you may be familiar with them also one of the main limitations of fossil fuels is that they release gases and many harmful substances that lead to pollution due to pollution when we inhale the polluted air it can further lead to many diseases and hazardous conditions too so first of all fossil fuels burning lead to release of many gases and harmful particles that further causes air pollution the second main important factor is that the fossil fuels on burning release acidic oxides of sulfur and nitrogen that finally leads to acid rain acid rain means during rain this acidic oxides of sulfur and nitrogen which has been released by the burning of fossil fuels like coal or oil or petroleum get dissolved in the rain and it rains down and when this acid rain hits the buildings or the human population or vegetation it lead to many hazardous things 
that's what is happened to our most famous taj mahal also it is now undergoing many pollution as well as corrosion effects due to the acid rain attack and the burning of fossil fuels also results in greenhouse effect what do you mean by greenhouse or global warming that is the temperature of atmosphere is always rising in a alarmed rate isn't it so it is due to the emission of carbon dioxide gas in a very large amount by the burning of fossil fuels like coal petroleum etc the temperature of atmosphere would increase and thus there will be the greenhouse effect and finally it leads to the depletion of earth's natural existing systems and can lead to many imbalances in nature so we need to have a correct idea so of the what are the disadvantages of fossil fuels and need to avoid it maximum and replace it with the renewable sources of energy this is a diagram which depicts a model to demonstrate the process of thermoelectric production the first component is a pressure cooker in which i have water the second one represent the turbines of a dynamo or a generator the turbine is being represented here as a tennis ball that is fitted with metal sheets that denotes its blades of a turbine it is further connected to a dynamo which is further connected to bulb so my intention is to lit the bulb so how can i lit the bulb i am using one form of energy to convert into other to another and finally i need to lit the bulb isn't it so i am going to transform energy so first is i will provide the heat for what to cook food or to boil water what do you do you provide energy in the form of heat so what would be doing in your home you would be finally what you are going to do is you will lit the stove isn't it through stove the gas is being flowing so suppose i have connected it to a gas cylinder which is having gas so natural gas is a form of fossil fuels isn't it so i am burning the fossil fuels i get heat energy i heat the pressure cooker here and from the pressure cooker when i heat the water inside it it will boil isn't it so when water boils what happens the water is being turned into steam isn't it so from the steam i am rooting the steam by using a steam pipe so steam or vapor is a form of energy isn't it so using the steam i am running the turbine or the depict model that is the tennis ball which is fitted with metal sheets so the turbine or as here the tennis ball which is having metal sheets as a blade will rotate using the energy from the steam and by rotating the turbine the generator will work and the generator will produce electricity and this electrical energy which is produced as electricity would light the bulb so what happens the energy or the heat energy is being converted into electrical energy so thermoelectric production happens from thermal energy we get electrical energy so next one is thermal power plants these are being also conventionally used for large amount of purposes this name as it suggests it includes the power plants where thermal energy is being used for various purposes what may be the key ingredient in case of thermal power plants here the key ingredient is the fossil fuels so what were fossil fuels they were the fuels that were obtained from fossils of animals which have decayed over years or millions of years isn't it so what were the main fossil fuels they are like coal oil natural gas petroleum etc isn't it so what happens is the fossil fuels will be burned in power stations like thermal power stations to heat the water so when we heat the water what happens they will produce steam isn't it then the steam will be used to run the turbines to generate electricity so the word thermal refers to heat so the fuel is burned to produce heat energy which is then converted into electrical energy so you can see here also as einstein said there is transfer of energy from heat to electrical energy so this is the one of the pictures that depict thermal power plants or the fossil fuels are used once they are heated they will produce steam and that is used to run 
the turbines of the generators to produce electricity. Another important one is hydropower plants. In hydropower plants, they are being included to produce hydropower energy, isn't it? For that, the general principle is that you need to construct a dam, isn't it? So during your school days, you may have gone to some of the dams, as in case of vacations or excursions, isn't it? What do you see? Most probably you would have seen some water that is already being stored in drums, isn't it? So, in order to consider the hydropower energy or construct hydropower plants, first of all, we construct high-rise dams as you can see in the picture. Where they are constructed, they will be constructed on rivers. And what does these dams do? These dams which are constructed on the rivers will obstruct the flow of water and collect the water in reservoirs. Isn't it? That's why when there is shortage of water or when there is shortage of electricity, the water in the dams are being used for irrigation purpose or for producing electricity. Isn't it? So first purpose is to construct high rise dams. The waters are constructed, waters are preserved in the high constructed dams acting as a reservoir. So as you can infer from the diagram, how a dam is working and how hydropower energy is used to produce electricity. We have first discussed that for hydropower plants to work, first of all we will construct a dam. The high rise dams are being constructed and from this the water will be stored in a height. The water which is stored in a height will possess potential energy and they act as a reservoir, isn't it? So the water which is stored at a height will be having a potential energy. So the potential energy of the water is then being utilized for further purposes. So what do we do is that from the water which is stored at a height, it will be then moved to the energy of motion of water. That is, we will allow the shutter of that particular dams to be raised and thus the water which is stored at a height would then flow down. So when the water flows down, the potential energy of water is converted into kinetic energy of water. What do you mean by kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is the energy possessed due to motion, isn't it? So the water which had potential energy earlier is now converted into kinetic energy. That is now the water is moving. And the water which is moving is now carried out using a penstock pipe, isn't it? So the potential energy of water is now converted into kinetic energy once it is set in motion. And then this kinetic energy of the water is then utilized for further purposes. How do we utilize this? This flowing water is carried using penstock pipes and the flowing water possesses an energy, isn't it? So that energy which is possessed by the flowing water is used as the mechanical energy. And using that mechanical energy, they will run the turbines of the generators. And what happens when the turbines of generator are being on? That is, when turbines are rotated, generators will help to produce electrical energy and finally lead to production of electricity. Thus, the electricity which is produced here is transmitted to long distances through the power lines. So, the potential energy of water is converted into kinetic energy of the moving water and finally then the mechanical energy is used to turn the turbines of the generator and finally the electrical energy is produced and electricity is produced. Thus, a hydropower plant works so efficiently to produce electrical energy from the hydropower energy. So, the potential energy of the stored water is converted into kinetic energy. How is it converted? Because the water which was once stored is now converted into flowing water. Now, the flowing water as it reaches the bottom of dam, what happens? It will turn the turbines of generator to generate electricity. So what are the main advantages of hydropower plants? Of course, water is so precious to us, isn't it? And we know the flowing water is always a renewable source of energy. Water is mainly supplied in the form of rain by nature itself, isn't it? 
so flowing water is a renewable source of energy and another main positive side of hydropower plant is that the electricity which is produced from this hydropower plants doesn't cause pollution that is it is pollution free there is no air pollution water pollution sand pollution or land pollution and also the water which is stored in the dams can be also used to control floods as well as for irrigation purposes when there is any scarcity of water we can use the water which we have already stored in the dams or the reservoirs for irrigation purposes but also the hydropower plants are having certain disadvantages what may be that you know in order to consider or construct a dam a huge amount of expense is needed so that so the initial cost of a hydropower plant is very high and there are large areas of land which get submerged and the decomposition of vegetation will produce methane like gases which are greenhouse gases that is if suppose there is opening of the shutters of the dam or something the water from the reservoir will flow down and we know large areas will get submerged or be flooded then what happens the vegetation which is present there will be decomposing and decomposition of such vegetation will lead to production of certain greenhouse gases like methane which is very harmful and we know that in order to construct dams there requires displacement of huge amount of people which lead to their losing of housing as well as their area of settlement of the land so these are certain disadvantages of hydropower plants so we need to have certain improvements in technology for using conventional sources of energy what was conventional source of energy the source of energy which is used traditionally and commonly familiar to everyone is known as conventional source of energy but since technology has advanced so far we have to analyze what improvements we can use in terms of technology so that we can efficiently use conventional sources of energy one such kind is biomass energy what do you mean by biomass it's a mass which is obtained from bio cell so bio means anything referring to life so the waste materials and the dead plant of the living things are called as biomass so the waste materials along with the dead parts of the living things mainly constitute biomass what may be the main components of biomass it can include wood animal dung vegetable waste the sewage or the agricultural waste so any form of waste material can be efficiently converted into biomass the main factor that is included in biomass energy production is anaerobic microorganisms so the role of anaerobic bacteria is very crucial in the production of biomass energy so biomass is decomposed by the anaerobic bacteria to produce the biogas so the biogas is mainly having a mixture of different gases like methane carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide hydrogen etc so which are the main gases it include methane carbon dioxide hydrogen hydrogen sulfide etc so in india when we talk about biomass the sewage waste cow dung the plant matter etc are decomposed in the absence of oxygen to produce biogas sometimes in your houses also you may be having biogas plants isn't it for what purpose you are mainly using biogas plants in your homes it may be to cook for lighting etc etc so the biogas is mainly called here as the gobar gas how is it called so it's because in producing biogas the main starting material which we use here is cow dung that's why we term it as gobar gas so this is a diagram which depicts how a biogas plant works so it is the type of a dome type as you can see from the figure so it includes many different parts so some of the parts that you really need to understand is what we are discussing now 
as you can see there is a fixed dome type biogas plant there is a mixing tank there is a underground digester tank and finally there is an outlet these are the main things that you need to understand and also finally there are mainly two things that we are getting we are getting the useful biogas as well as another important component which is the rest of the things that are present as the remaining slurry so that will be also used for some other purposes okay so how do we use it is a very important that is first there is a mixing tank as you can see isn't it it is being represented by capital m so in the mixing tank i am doing the mixing what may be the things that i am mixing it can be the cow dung the sewage the waste things the plant waste animal things along with water so i am mixing all this wastes together send it after that what i do the mixed one is being going to the underground digester tank there will be openings as well as closing for the mixing tank send it so if i am closing then i will be mixing the things after that i will open the valve and those mixed things will go into the underground digester tank so as the word suggests it is a digester tank isn't it so what may be the digester tank then doing the digester tank performs the main thing that is it is the place where the anaerobic bacteria act the anaerobic bacteria will decompose this slurry that i have mixed in the mixing tank and that i have fed into the underground digester tank so they will decompose the slurry and in the absence of oxygen that's a main important point so the microorganism present there as the main one is the anaerobic bacteria or microorganism so they are able to decompose the slurry in the absence of oxygen and finally from this slurry by decomposition of them in the anaerobic condition the biogas is being produced so the biogas which is produced will be having a mixture of different gases like methane hydrogen carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide etc and finally the biogas which is now filled inside the fixed dome type will be used for different purposes and it is made available to outside or it is obtained to outside by using an outlet pipe through a glass slab and thus there are different parts for the fixed dome type plant that is biogas plant but the main things only you need to consider so there is a mixing tank where i mix the slurry and from there it goes to the underground digester tank in the digester tank the digestion happens that is the our main proponents of this biogas is the microorganism so the anaerobic microorganism or bacteria will decompose that slurry and they produce the biogas which is mixture of different gases like methane hydrogen hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide etc so the biogas which i obtain is now used for different purposes so the different things are getting into into different chambers and different processes are happening in different chambers that's the main thing that you have to understand so there are different uses of biogas what may be the different implications of biogas in our day to day life the first one is that biogas is an excellent fuel we have already told that biogas is a mixture of different fuels isn't it or it's a mixture of different gases so one of the main component of biogas is methane so the presence of methane in 75 percentage makes it an excellent fuel another important advantage of biogas is that it burns without smoke for example if you burn a wood you will get ash along with smoke isn't it so that smoke is quite irritatable as well as causing many diseases to the people who inhale that air isn't it since the biogas burns without smoke it is pollution free isn't it and also the biogas will leave no residue like suppose if i am burning wood i have said i get ash isn't it but in case of biogas they leaves no residue another important advantage of biogas is that their heating capacity is quite high so they can also be used for commercial as well as industrial purposes and we can see some of the slurry will be left behind isn't it 
that slurry can be used as a good manure or a natural fertilizer for our vegetation and biogas is also an efficient and util method for waste disposal that is it can be utilized in a very proper way to dispose the waste for example if we are having so much plant waste or animal waste in our houses what we can do we can efficiently convert into biogas without much expenses so another important non conventional source of energy but we need to have more improvements is wind energy so how wind energy is being used the energy from wind is termed as wind energy as simple as that but how do we define it how is the energy transformation happening in terms of wind energy that is in order to harness wind energy or utilize wind energy wind energy farms are being constructed as you can see there is a wind energy farm if you have visited tamil nadu you could have seen such farms while going through the rock so then so in case of wind energy we need wind mills to harness them and so many wind mills which are planted over a large area or which are erected over a large area gives a wind farm in case of wind energy when the wind blows it processes some energy isn't it energy due to motion is called as kinetic energy so the kinetic energy of the flowing wind is used to rotate the turbines or the blades of the windmill to produce the electrical energy so kinetic energy of wind is converted into mechanical energy which turn the turbines or the blades of generator to produce the electrical energy and the kinetic energy of wind which we use here can be used to do many mechanical work it can be like grinding grains in the flour mills that we go or it can be used to lift water from deep underground so it can be also used for other purpose like production of electricity so the kinetic energy of wind can be utilized in different manners it can be used for production of electricity as well as for common purposes like grinding grains in the mills or lifting water from underground so we need to understand how a windmill works you can see the picture of a windmill how does it look like it has a structure which is similar to a large fan isn't it like an electric fan and this fan is erected at a height and it will have a rigid support you can see the windmills are having certain blades here there are three blades so the rotatory motion of the windmill will run the turbines of the electric generator which is connected to it so since the wind moves and rotate the windmill it will run the turbine of the electric generator and finally electricity is being produced so what are the main positives or pros and cons of wind energy we need to understand so one of the main positive effect of wind energy is that they are environment friendly isn't it they do not harm the environment and another important one is that they are a renewable source of energy the wind is being given by the nature itself isn't it so it is having an unlimited supply as long as the nature gives us so it is a renewable source of energy as well as a recurring cost is less that is the cost which comes intermittently due to some problems is compared to other ones as a less one and also the wind energy is pollution free it doesn't cause any kinds of pollution like water soil or air pollution but there are also some limitations of wind energy what may be that the limitations or shortcoming of wind energy is that we can't construct wind energy farms in any areas that we like why we can construct wind energy farms only areas where the wind blows for most of the part of the year then only they will be economical isn't it suppose we construct a huge wind energy farm okay but if the wind is not blowing proper, properly in that particular place and if you are not able to produce electricity in a high amount will that be economical no so only those areas which are suitable that the wind will be blowing there for most of the year are being used for construction of wind energy farm 
and another main requirement for efficient working of a wind energy farm is that minimum a speed of 15 km per hour is required that the wind can be used to rotate the turbine. We know that only when the turbine rotates then the electricity will be produced by the generator. So we should ensure that minimum the wind speed is 15 km per hour. And the wind energy farm as you can see it requires a lot of initial expenses like cost of establishment of the windmill and also huge area is to be needed. And you can also see there are some metal parts for the windmills like blades and the tower etc. Since they are exposed to air, high maintenance is required most of the times. So these are certain shortcomings of wind energy but if we utilize it in a proper manner, wind energy is one of the most good and renewable source of energy that can be utilized for many industrial as well as commercial purposes. Now we need to see what do you mean by alternative or non-conventional sources of energy. What do you mean by non-conventional? That is against conventions. We know that the conventional source of energy that we use for anything and everything is the fossil fuels, isn't it? The coal, petroleum, oil, natural gas, etc. But we can use some alternatives or some non-conventional sources of energy instead of those fossil fuels. So in this session, we are going to discuss about that topic. There are different non-conventional sources of energy that can be utilized in very useful manner. And why this non-conventional source of energy are important? We know that the conventional source of energy that we all use is the fossil fuels, isn't it? But the fact is that the increasing use of fossil fuels leads to its scarcity or shortage. And it is estimated that if the present rate of consumption of the fossil fuels increase in such a rate, then the, the reserves of these fuels will be getting exhausted or depleted. So we have to face a scarcity of these fossil fuels in the near future itself. And also the burning of fossil fuels as we have already said cause different kinds of pollution. The environment is polluted in a huge manner. So it's high time that we must be using some non-conventional sources. And what are these non-conventional sources? That is what we are going to discuss. The first and foremost important non-conventional sources of energy is solar energy. What do you mean by solar energy? The energy from the sun. And it is being reported that nearly half of the solar energy is absorbed while passing through the atmosphere and only the rest reaches the earth's surface. So solar energy is the energy that is obtained from sun. It can be of mainly two types, it can be heat energy as well as light energy. The heat energy is mainly used in solar heating devices like solar cooker, solar water heater, solar furnaces etc. What in case of light energy from sun? The light energy is used in case of solar cells or solar panels, isn't it? So first we can study about the heat energy from sun being effectively used in case of solar cookers. As you can see from the figure that the solar cooker has a box type solar cooker and it is insulated a box which is painted black inside. Why is it painted black? It is painted black inside because as we know the black surface has capacity to absorb more heat compared to white or any other reflecting surfaces. And this particular box type will be covered by a glass plate as you can see in the picture. What is the role of glass plate in case of a solar cooker? This glass plate allows the heat to enter inside and at the same time it will prevent the heat to escape out. So the glass plate has the main role that maximum heat is trapped inside and it makes sure that not much heat is escaping out from the solar cooker. And it also has a mirror which is placed here to reflect most of the sunlight into the box itself. The food which you need to cook will be kept in the containers inside the box which is painted black 
and it can produce a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius up to 140 degrees Celsius. So the main important parts to solar cooker as you can see is that there is a black painted insulated box, a mirror as well as a glass sheet. So you can cook the food with the help of the heat energy that you obtain from the sun. We have already dealt that the heat energy from sun is being used in case of solar cookers and the light energy from sun is also having some applications, isn't it? That is mainly in case of solar cells and a group of solar cells contribute to solar panels. As you can see from the picture, in case of solar cells or solar panels and in case of solar lamps, we use the light energy from the sun. Solar panels consist of solar cells which are found in an array and these solar cells are each composed of semiconductor called as silicon. And how does the solar panels work? We know that when light falls on the solar cell, electricity is produced and that's how it works. But what happens internally? For that we need to know about the structure of solar cell. In case of solar cells, inside they will be made of semiconductors called silicon and in case of semiconductors there will be positive and negative sides which is separated by a distance and thus an electric field is produced. When lights fall on this solar cells what happens? They have photons inside it, isn't it? The energy packets which are present inside the light is called as photons. So when these light rays touch the solar cell surface the electrons inside it will be having a tendency to move or they move by getting the energy from the photons that falls on the solar cells. So once the electrons move in the electric field, the electricity is being produced and thus we can light the things by using the electricity which is obtained from the solar cells or solar panels. The solar lamps are also another application which mainly uses the light energy that is obtained from the sun. Now we have dealt how light energy from sun is used in case of working on solar cells or solar panels. But they have some advantages as well as some limitations. One of the main advantages of solar cells is that they use renewable source of energy that is solar energy. And solar cells produce electricity that doesn't cause any pollution. They are pollution free that doesn't cause any air pollution, water pollution or any sorts of environmental pollution. And one of the main advantages of solar cells is that they can be used even in remote areas where we have no power supplies. And since we have seen that these solar cells do not have any moving parts, they require only very less maintenance. And these solar cells are efficient that they work very good way even without the use of any focusing devices. But there are also certain shortcomings for solar cells. The main component that is used in solar cells is the semiconductor silicon. But the special grade of silicon which is used in solar cells making is quite expensive. Since it is used for connecting cells with the help of silver that is also expensive, isn't it? Another main shortcoming of solar cells is that the current produced by the solar cells is mostly direct current. But the current that we need for our domestic purposes is AC or the alternating current. So indeed the cost increases when we have to convert the DC current to AC current. So another important non-conventional source of energy or an energy source which we don't use so familiarly but has immense potential is energy from sea. We all like to play in the sea water, isn't it? It's very fun to have merry with our friends, family, etc. But in case of physics or in case of energy also, this is very important. How is it important? Because energy from sea is of immense potential and ability that they can produce electricity, they can do wonders. So how do we produce energy from sea? It is mainly in the form of three ways, that is tidal energy, sea wave energy and ocean thermal energy. So we can look one by one how these energies are being utilized to have harnessing from the sea. So first one is tidal energy. 
what does the word meaning says it is energy from tides so what is tides that is it is a rising or falling of sea level when the sea level rises it is called as high tide and when the sea level falls it is called as the opposite that is the low tide so how this this high tide and low tide happens that's a very important matter that we need to concern it is caused because the periodic rise and fall of sea level is happening how does it happen it's because there will be gravitational attraction of the moon on the earth is the earth constant every time no it's come it's always rotating or revolution isn't it so the gravitational attraction of moon acts on the spinning earth which leads to cause the tide so this difference in tide levels causes the tidal energy so how this tidal energy is being utilized that is first we need to construct a dam so already we know to construct a dam it requires so many important things to be in the initial stage so if you are able to construct a dam in the narrow opening between the land and sea then just like the hydropower plants the movement of the water which is which energy is utilized there the kinetic energy so the energy due to motion so the movement of water during the high tide and low tide is used effectively to rotate the turbines of generators which ultimately produces the electricity so tidal energy can be harnessed in a very systematic manner to produce energy the another one is a sea wave energy so we all are happy when we see the sea but when it is ferocious or when it is in a huge wave just like tsunami or something of other things it is somewhat beyond our context but th this even this energy can be harnessed to have beautiful types of energy waves or energy things that can be used for commercial purposes but the thing is that for countries like us which are still in the growing stage more technologies and applications need to be developed we can hope that the today's and tomorrow's children like you will be able to do more technology for harnessing such types okay so how sea wave energy can be harnessed we know when strong winds blow the sea will be having a increase in the height or huge waves will be produced and just like the same other things when the huge waves are coming that means the kinetic energy is more or the energy due to motion is more so the kinetic energy of the moving waves is used finally to rotate the turbines which finally produces the electricity so the third form of energy that can be used from as energy from sea is ocean thermal energy so ocean thermal energy so the thermal refers to heat so the heat energy from the ocean can be utilized to produce energy from the sea as we all know if we take a water surface the water at the peripheral surface will be having more temperature when compared to the water which is at the bottom why is it so it's simple as that it's because the water which is at the front or which is at the topmost layer is exposed to external conditions like heat from the sun so that water will be more warm but the water at the depth or the bottom will be cold so in order to harness the ocean thermal energy what is most required is there should be a temperature difference between the surface water and the water which is at depth it should be minimum between of 20 degree celsius so to harness the ocean thermal energy ocean thermal power plants are being constructed and the surface water and the water the depth should of 2 km at least should have a temperature difference of 20 degree celsius then we can utilize this difference in temperature between the surface water of the ocean and the water at the bottom to harness the energy how is it required that is the warm water which is at the surface is used to boil the liquid ammonia and when we boil it of course it converts into vapor isn't it so this vapor of ammonia can be used how it can be used to rotate the turbines of the generators and finally produce our desired result that is electricity so what about the another thing the cold water we need to utilize it also isn't it so the cold water that is at the bottom of the sea is then pumped to cool back the vapor into liquid isn't it to turn back the liquid the vapor into liquid we do condensation isn't it 
so the warm water at the surface as well as the cold water at the bottom is being effectively used to produce electricity thus the energy from sea can be harnessed in three ways as we have already said tidal energy the sea wave energy as well as the ocean thermal energy so this is a picture which demonstrate how we can harness ocean thermal energy the differences in the oceans or huge waves and tides can be harnessed effectively so that ocean thermal energy can be harnessed another important and yet most crucial one of non conventional energy which is less exploited is or which is less utilized in a proper manner is geothermal energy geothermal means the energy or the heat that is obtained from earth but the difference is that it will be deep embedded inside the earth we already know earth has different layers like crust mantle and core so deep inside the earth's inner core we have a lot of potential of heat energy so if you are able to utilize it in the proper way we can even produce so much energy from our own earth so how do we do it it's very important as a student as well as as people who look forward for more energy resources we need to know how the earth is helping us more isn't it so geothermal energy is the energy which is stored inside our beautiful earth as heat so as the term suggests heat from earth so it can be harnessed only if we have some equipments or if we have certain requirements this requirements is that we need to first identify the hot spots or the geothermal hot spots what do you mean by hot spots spots means particular areas or particular findings of of places on earth so in this hot spots there will be molten rock in the earth crust and it will be stored in high forms where the entire heat energy will be trapped so we need to find where are these geothermal hot spots in our earth if you are able to identify them using some detection devices then from this molten rocks we can easily extract the heat which is present deep inside earth and it can be utilized for various purposes and how we utilize this purpose is that the water will be underground isn't it so the underground water when it comes in contact with the hot spots that is present on earth steam is produced how is it produced when the water comes in contact with heat or with the hot spots there will be a lot of heat energy isn't it so when water comes in contact with the hot spots the water will turn into liquid simple thing is that when water is subjected to heat it boils and turns into vapor or steam so steam is being produced then as we always do or as we always say the steam is then used to run the turbines and finally produce the electricity so our efficient way is that steam trapped inside the rock should be able to be routed or obtained so for that we require so many power plants or so many equipments and that is being shown in this figure it is a geothermal power plant as you can see deep from the earth we are routing the steam which is produced to produce finally the electricity which is being extracted through pipes so the another important non conventional source of energy which is not being so much used in a common way it's it may be because it may be expensive or there may be safety issues but still nuclear energy is one said to be one of the most reliable sources when we compare fossil fuels you may wonder why we can say it is reliable it is because it doesn't explode by itself like fossil fuels only if there is a further ignition or only if the storing and transport is being done in a hazardous manner nuclear energy is having a limitation otherwise it is one of the most important energy that has immense potential for the future we can look how does nuclear energy is one of the most important sources of energy nuclear energy is energy that can be obtained during nuclear reactions you may be familiar with the different nuclear reactions mainly the nuclear reactions happen in two manner first one is fission and second one is fusion as the word suggests fusion means to fuse means to join and to fission means to split into so during this nuclear reactions it can be either nuclear fission or nuclear fusion what happens is of course the energy is produced that's what we need okay but how energy is produced it's because 
the mass is converted into energy during this nuclear reactions and this humongous amount of energy is finally utilized for different purposes. As you can see in the picture, there is fission as well as fusion. In fission, what happens is a larger atom splits into its compounds or two smaller ones. What is in the case of fusion? It happens is that two of them join, two smaller nuclei or atom join to form a larger one. So nuclear fission as well as fusion results in formation of nuclear energy in terms of nuclear reactions. So we need to separately understand how nuclear fusion and how nuclear fission contributes to nuclear energy. So as we have already stated fusion means to combine. I am sure you will be familiar with fusion festivals of food but just like that there is also nuclear fusion. So a nuclear reaction in which the small nucleus combine to form heavy nucleus and the main factor is it should release a huge amount of energy. So that is called as nuclear fusion. So how about the energy of sun we get? Is it a fusion or fission? The answer is it is nuclear fusion which is resulting in the formation of energy of sun. How does it happen? Let's look at it. And an important factor of concerning the nuclear fusion is that nuclear fusion's energy is being used to make hydrogen bombs. It's really dangerous but the fact of any science is that we can use the same science for doing good things as well as bad things. The nuclear energy for its good purposes we can use it to produce electricity, to run machines, commercial purpose etc. But as we all know the greedy man uses it to make some negative things. So let's forget about it. We need to focus on the positive things. So we can understand or we can infer how the energy of sun is being made from nuclear fusion. So in this picture you can see how fusion is happening. So deuterium and tritium combine together. And what is the byproduct? The byproducts are helium, energy as well as neutron. So as we know deuterium and tritium are the isotopes of hydrogen. So the lighter hydrogen nuclei combine together to form helium that is a bigger atom. An enormous amount of energy is also being produced in nuclear fusion. Along with them neutron is also being produced which is a chargeless particle. So this is depicting how nuclear fusion happens in case of sun that is hydrogen nuclei combine to form helium nucleus the heavier one along with so much amount of energy as well as neutron. So nuclear fusion is an important process for the chemical reaction which helps the sun to produce its energy. And the second nuclear reaction is nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is the one which is mainly used in terms of nuclear chain reactions or nuclear power plants that is being done in factories or commercial purpose. So nuclear fusion means a nuclear reaction in which the nucleus of a heavy atom it can be like uranium or plutonium which splits into smaller nuclei and what happens the desired byproduct is the energy that is also large amount of energy. As we have said nuclear fusion is used in case of energy production in sun as well as to produce hydrogen bombs and nuclear fission is also is equally important it is used to make atom bombs. In case of nuclear power plants as we have already stated nuclear fission is the main reaction that is happening that is in nuclear power plants the heat energy that is produced by a certain type of reaction that is controlled nuclear fission chain reaction that is as a chain reaction it is happening and it is controlled by certain coolants or certain physical conditions and finally steam is being produced and that rotates the turbines of generator to finally get the product as electricity. So nuclear fission is also important which is used in various purposes for industrial purposes or as the extra limits it is used in atom bombs which is not so feasible or which is not so appreciable but still it is even producing electricity so it is useful for the humankind. So this is how nuclear fusion happens in case of uranium atom. As we have already said it can be used in 
many types like uranium, plutonium, etc. But the present picture shows how fission splits the uranium atom. As you can see the from the breather, the neutron will be colliding with uranium 235. So when the neutron collides with uranium 235, it gives lighter elements, energy as well as neutrons. That is by bombarding neutron with a heavier atom, it leads to production of lighter elements along with the release of large amount of energy as well as neutrons. So we have discussed and stated how nuclear energy is being produced by the processes of nuclear fission as well as nuclear fusion. So as any types of another energy, nuclear energy is also having its pros as well as cons. So the advantages or the benefits of nuclear energy is that it can produce a large amount of energy per its unit volume or mass. We have already defined that a good source of energy is one which will be able to do maximum amount of work for a given mass or volume or it should be able to produce huge amount of energy for a given unit of volume or mass. So in that terms nuclear energy is one of the best energy. And another thing that you need to heed or notice is if safety measures are taken in a proper manner like scientifically if we are taking proper safety regards then it is more environment friendly when we compare with fossil fuels. So if the proper, proper necessary steps are being taken then it is being safe. But the limitations of nuclear energy is also to be noticed. The main disadvantage is that nuclear reactors implementation costs a huge expense. And also as we know like fossil fuels of coal, oil, petroleum or natural gas they are not so nuclear fuel is not so available easily. For example to buy fossil fuels you can go to an agent to buy coal or oil or petroleum. You can go to gas stations or you can buy a gas cylinder. You can even go to pump stations to get fuel to your car by petroleum or diesel. But for the layman or for the common people nuclear fuel is not so easily available. Isn't it? You can't go to a shop and buy some nuclear fuel. No. So the availability of nuclear fuel is very limited. And another one is the disposal of waste that is produced during nuclear reaction. As we have already stated, the nuclear reactors produce some nuclear wastes just like the e-waste or the nuclear wastes are also difficult to dispose. E-waste is harming our minds, nuclear wastes is harming the environment or causing a great danger to environment. So, the nuclear energy, if it is able to harness in the proper way using scientific methods, it is one of the most reliable source. But on the other hand, it is having hazardous ways like making an atom bomb or hydrogen bomb. So, we should focus on how to use these energies for the best output to harness more energy for different purposes instead of making bombs to destroy the humankind. So, we need to know, we already dealt or we already had so many discussions about which are the different sources of energy, renewable, non-renewable, alternative or non-conventional sources of energy. Be it any source of energy, the energy that we should choose must depend on many factors. We have already discussed and we already had a brief detailing of how or what are the different characteristics of good sources of energy, isn't it? So, the energy that we choose must depend on certain criteria. We should look at the economics of extracting the energy from the source. Be it any source of energy like wind, solar, geothermal or even the water from the sea. We need to know how is it economical or is it with the hands of our money or the money that is being made by human can it be utilized properly or is it a waste of money we need to understand and we need to have proper technologies or efficient technologies should be made available then only a source of energy can be properly harnessed. We should also take into concern our environment isn't it? Environment is our mother or provides us with everything we need. So the environmental damage caused by the sources of energy should be also taken into concern when we choose a source of energy whether it be renewable, non-renewable or non-conventional sources of energy. 
and how long will an energy source last it depends on many factors the main thing is fossil fuels when we come the thought into mind fossil fuels can't be relied on for a future because once they are being replenished or once they are depleted means they can't be regenerated within a short period of time so we can't depend much on fossil fuels for our long future and also we can't rely on the non renewable sources of energy for a long time because they can't be renewed so fast oh, so we can't rely much on the exhaustible things also so what we should focus us we should be able to harness the different renewable sources of energy in the most efficient manner and utilize non conventional sources of energy which are not harming nature which are easily renewable in the best possible manner so that the energy which is available by the earth or which earth and the nature provides us unlimitedly should be utilized in the proper way so that the energy can be utilized by man for good purposes and in industries as well as commercial applications